mock him that his mercies. Hallelujah. They are renewed. Every day. Every morning, Israel. Don't we need that? Hallelujah. The renewing of Almighty Yahweh to rest upon the house of Israel. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, you all, Israel, that are listening by via of live stream. Those that are here with us in Teshua, we do ask that the hands of Almighty Yahweh will cover you, that his amunah will fill your nephesh. Hallelujah. And that his balm of Gilead, Yahshua HaMashiach, will be applied. Hallelujah. 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 I want to speak tonight, Israel, concerning the house. Why do we often chart off the path of Almighty Yahweh and follow other gods, other concepts, other desires? We have, have a history, Israel, of making things, making people, our emotions, God's unto us. What is that? It's anything that detours you from the misvah of Almighty Yah. Anything you place before Almighty Yahweh is your God. No matter what religion you may be of, if it's not after the Torah of the doctrine of Yahshua HaMashiach, then you're following other gods. No matter if you're Hindu, Confucius, a Muslim, whatever you may call yourself, if you're not walking after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, then you're serving other gods. As a matter of fact, just to bring it plain and simple, you're worshiping Satan. You're not walking after the Imun of Almighty Yahweh. You're not walking in the Imun of Yahshua HaMashiach. But what we have done as a people... And we cannot blame it on other cultures. But it's because we allow ourselves to be led by the flesh, Israel. As Almighty Yahweh had delivered Israel from Mizraim. As many times our precious all came to me mentions that we come out of Mizraim with so much baggage. From Egypt, from Mizraim, from the world. And we try to incorporate it into the Torah, into the mind of Yahweh. And it's not going to work that way, Israel. If you would turn with me to Shema Exodus chapter 23, verse 10, I want to begin reading. For Yahweh, he's not going to have anyone before him, Yisrael. No, he's either going to have a people that walk after his Mishvah and his Torah, or he's going to have, there's going to be a people that's going to be separated from his presence. Into hell, into destruction for all eternity, which there is no time limit on, Yisrael. So he commands us specifically not to say anything before him, not to make any images to worship, molding images to worship. And I will get into that in, in um, Shema, in Exodus. But I want to begin in Yashar, chapter um, 82, verse 11. But I want to, let me let's continue here in Exodus 23 and 10. It says, concerning the Shabbats of Almighty Yahweh, we should not let anything detour us from Yahweh's Shabbats, Yisrael. It is a commandment unto us. If you allow, whether it's your kinsman, whether it's your wife, your husband, detour you from the statues of Almighty Yahweh, whether it is um, a theme in the world, a game, if I might say, a football game or anything like that, detours you for keeping the Shabbat of Almighty Yahweh Kodesh and set apart. Now, you're not serving Almighty Yahweh, but you're serving your flesh. You're serving other gods, Yisrael. And it says here, And the six years you shall sow your land, and shall gather in the fruits thereof. But on the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie still, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave the beast of the field shall eat. In like manner, you shall deal with your vineyard and with your olive yard. It says six days shall you do no work. And on the seventh day shall be a Shabbat Torah, Shabbat. And it says even here that your ox and your ass may rest. Even the beast. Even the beast must rest, Israel. 
And the son of your handmaiden and the stranger may be refreshed. That we may be refreshed, Israel. Isn't that so simple? You know, our minds so many times go to and fro. We don't know how to rest. Even on the Shabbat of Yah, there's so many things that take, take our minds that we cannot rest in the Amun of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our minds going to and fro. We're worrying about what's going to happen on tomorrow, what happened yesterday. We should lay all things at the feet of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. We should cast all of our cares upon Him. Hallelujah. He shall direct our path, Yisrael. Verse 13. And in all things that I have said to you, he says to be circumspect. Mm -hmm. I want you to observe. Sure. Not only observe, I want you to do and obey Yisrael. And make no mention. Not a word should be spoken. No mention. Mm -hmm. Things that we place higher than Almighty Yahweh. Yahweh can handle any circumstance. There's nothing that will hamper the power of Almighty Yahweh. Not to make no mention of the name, not even the names, of or follow after gods. Gods. What is the definition of gods? Well, it, like I said before, it's basically anything you put before Almighty Yahweh. We should not let other things, whether it be situation or circumstance, whether it be man, we should not put that before Almighty Yahweh. Even on his Shabbat, it should be a time of rest. We should not even bring that up. We should rest in the Torah and the knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach, that his dom has cleansed and washed us from all of our sins and all of our iniquities. Hallelujah. And he said, neither let it be heard out of your mouth. So we should not even mention those things. We should not place anything that exalts itself above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Not anything. Whether it be husband or wife, whether it be sons or daughters, like I said, whether it be circumstance or situation, we should not put those things above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because when we do that, when we place Yahweh and his Torah, his Mishvah on the back burner, what have we done? We have created other gods. We have amassed of a multitude of small things and made it a bigger thing. Hallelujah. Is that not what Israel did when they left the land of Mizraim, when Moshe went up into the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights? They wondered what happened to this leader, what happened to this man. So what did they do, Israel? I will get to that. I will get to that. But yet I, there's a few accounts I do want to get to, and I want to make um, somewhat of a haste. Um, in Yashar 82, verse 11, I want to begin reading. And the reason why I want to read these few accounts, because in each account, there's a tidbit of, of truth that we can all garner from it, Israel. Yeah. And I felt like for us to get the full, um, these, uh, the full effect or the full example, I want to read each uh, example of this, each, each situation. And at the end of 40 days and 40 nights, when Yahweh had finished speaking unto Moshe on Mount Sinai, when Yahshua gave to Moshe the tables of stone written with the finger of Almighty Yahweh, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh written. And when the children of Israel saw that Moshe, he tarried to come down from the mount, they gathered around Aharon and said, As for this man Moshe, we know not what has become of him. Now, therefore, rise up, and he says to make to us a God. An image. Make to us something that we can see with our physical eyes, that we can touch with our physical hands. The man Moshe, this leader, has not come down from the mount. We don't know what happened to him. So we want something tangible. We want some evidence that should go before us so that you shall not die. There were even um, endangering his life, that if he don't do this, that he shall perish. And Aharon, he was greatly afraid of the people. We need men of Yahweh that are not afraid of the faces of the people. We need men of Yahweh that are not afraid of what men may say to them or about them. 
But we need men that should stand in the Torah of Yahweh no matter what may transpire. But Ahara, he was greatly afraid of the people, and he ordered them to bring him gold, and he made it into a molten calf for the people. And as I go on in another instance, we're going to find out where the gold come from, Israel. Where the gold come from. And this gold represents what we consider great. What we consider to be a treasure or a wealth, Yisrael. And we should not hold anything above the Torah, the Mishpah of Yahweh. That is treasure. That is gold. That is great wealth unto Yisrael. But what we have done, we have placed other things before Almighty Yahweh. We place our bellies, the God of our bellies, before Almighty Yahweh. We place our sons, our daughters, before the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. They become gods in our eyes. They bid our every movement, our every act that we put the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach on the back burner. And I'm talking to all of us, House of Israel, y'all. Those are the listening. Well, that's a hard saying, Zakhan Yaramiah. No, it's not a hard saying. It's only hard if you have iniquity dwelling in your bosom, Israel. For the Torah of Yahweh is made hard unto those that walk after iniquity. And this idol or this bullock, it represents so, so, many, so many things, Israel. We take, we break off little pieces, and we mold things together. Mold them together. And what comes forth is a beast nature. There's so many times in Scripture and Torah that mentions the calf or a cow or even the heifer. But in this, in this instance, it talks about the male calf or the bull ox. And what did that simplify? It's basically the one that is dominant. The one that takes over. If you watch a bull in a herd of heifers, you know who's in command. He don't have to prove it. He don't have to tell you, I'm the bull out here. Just by his presence alone, you see that he's the bull and he's in charge. So that's what that represents in this instance, the male or the bull out. We set this bull out or these things before Almighty Yahweh, and it should not be Yisrael. It should not be. Hallelujah. It goes on to verse 15. And Yahweh said to Moshe, before he had come down from the mount, get you down. For your people who you did bring forth out of Mizraim have corrupted themselves. Have we found ourselves being corrupted, Israel? Yeah. When we don't allow the, the Torah of Yahweh to fill us. When there's voids in our lives, it allows other things to fill those voids. Yes. And those things, most of the time, they're not of Almighty Yahweh. They're not of Yah. If the Torah doesn't fill the Lev, Israel, Yah, then everything else is just dross. It is not pure. It is unclean before Almighty Yahweh. It says in verse 16, They have made themselves a molten calf and have bowed down to it, to worship it, to pay homage unto it. They lifted up the calf above the Torah of Yahweh. Now therefore leave me that I may consume them for off of the Olim, off the earth, for they are a stiff-necked people. And that is a true saying, Israel. We are a stiff-necked people. We are a stiff-necked people, Israel. Time after time again, Yahweh has warned us. He teaches us. He takes time with us, Israel. And still yet, we find time for other things. We, have, we find time to take pleasure in the things of the flesh that do not please Almighty Yahweh. And when Moshe approached the camp, he saw the calf which the people had made. And the anger of Moshe was kindled, and he broke the tables under the mount. He broke the sayings, the Torah of Yahweh that was written on the tables, Yisrael. Do we cause Yahweh to break his Torah? Yisrael. Well, there's an instance where Moshe did reprove Yahweh for a promise that he did make. He said, remember Yitzhak and those you have promised that you will make their seed more plentiful than even the sands of the seed, Israel. So yes, we have angered Yahweh to the point 
We have brought him to the edge, Israel, because of our sins and before, because of our iniquities. And Moshe came into the camp, and he took the calf, and he burned it with fire, and he ground it. He was angry. He burnt it with fire. We should burn those things that are not of Almighty Yahweh. Those things that try to make us detour off of the devour of the path of Almighty Yahweh, his direct. And not only did he burn it, but he ground it into fine dust, and he strolled it, or he spread it upon the waters and gave it to the Israelites to drink. So they had to partake of that, um, that filthy thing, Israel. That was a type of the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. They had to drink the water from the calf. From this thing that was unclean before Almighty Yahweh. Even before the instance, he warned them, like I read earlier, yeah. do not make any graven things, whether it's in the Shemayims or in the Olam beneath, and worship it. Why do we do that, Yisrael? Yeah? It's not Yahweh the maker and creator of all things. Did he not make the expanse, all the things that we see, what we see now, the beasts? The birds of the air. So why would we steep so low, Yisrael, to worship these things? Oh, no, we, we don't go out and bow down before the cows. But yet there are those of us, many of us, that cannot pass by restaurants or Burger King and stop for a Big Mac. There are many of us that can not resist the pulling of the flesh, Yisrael. And that has become our molten calf. All the things that we have taken from Israel, our attitudes, our habits, what we do, we, complex, we, we bind it all together and we make an unclean thing before Almighty Yahweh and we do worship it. We place it before Almighty Yahweh. So we should destroy it. We should allow the fire of Yahweh's Torah to consume it. We should let the battle acts of his judgment bust it up, Yisrael. And then yet, what is left? The night the scripture said that whatever show, that a man showeth, that thing shall he also reap. And we're going to see this as I move on. Yet, even though Moshe destroyed the calf, and they had a drink of that iniquity. Don't you know Yahshua, how much he had drank of our iniquity, Israel, on the stake? He took and drunk that cup for us all. We could not bear the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. But yet, he stood in the gap. Israel for us. Hallelujah. His body was beaten and it was bruised because of our sins and because of our iniquities. Isn't that something? And yet by those same bruises and scars, we are what? We are refined. We are healed. The bomb is applied unto the house of Israel. So Yahweh has not allowed us, Israel, to taste of the full indignations of our iniquities. Israel. Because if it was so, there will be no salvation. There will be no way we can enter into the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Yahweh. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 20. I'm sorry, let's move back to 19. And Moshe came to the camp and he took the cow, he burned it with fire and ground it. And it became as fine dust, and he spread, he spread it upon the waters and gave it to the Israelites to drink. And there died of the people, by the swords of each other, about 3,000 men who had made the calf. So we see the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. He doesn't play Israel, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he speaks unto us, he means it. Hallelujah. Verse 22. And Moshe again went up unto Yahweh. And he remained with Yahweh for 40 days and 40 nights. And during the 40 days in Moshe, he entreated Almighty Yahweh. Did not Yahshua entreat Yahweh for us, Yisrael? Yeah. Did not he plead for the mercies of Yahweh upon us? Yeah. That we would be not wiped out completely? Yeah. In behalf of the children of Yisrael, and Yahweh hearkened to the prayer of Moshe, and Yahweh was entreated of him, on behalf of Israel, I bless Yahweh for the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. For even when we stray off the path, Israel, his word brings us 
right back into view. As the old condition would say, stay on the beaten path. It's already been laid out for us, Israel. Y'all. All we have to do is walk in the path. Y'all, Shua has laid the path for us. They spake Yahweh unto Moshe to hew the, sto- the stones and to the tablets and bring it to him. And he will write upon them the ten Mishfah, the ten commandments. Now Moshe, he did so and came down and he showed the tablets. And he hewed the tablets and went up to Mount Sinai to Yahweh. And Yahweh wrote the Ten Commandments upon those tablets. Are the, are the commandments written upon the tablets tonight, Yisrael, of your left? Do we walk in the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh? He declared that he would do a new thing. What was that new thing? That we do not have to look upon the tablets for the Torah. But his Torah has been, writ- has been written in our left, Yisrael, yeah, that we should obey his every command. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Moshe, he remained yet with Yahweh for 40 days and 40 nights. And Yahweh instructed him in the statutes and the judgments to impart them unto Yisrael. Yeah. And Yahweh commanded him, respecting the children of Yisrael, yeah, that they should make a sanctuary for Almighty Yahweh. A sanctuary. A dwelling place for his name, Yisrael. Yeah. He has not commanded us to make images or to make images unto calves or four-legged beasts or fowl of the air. All he asks is just for us to make a bayit, a sanctuary, and I live. That his presence may dwell in us, Yisraya. That his name may be written on our foreheads, Yisraya. That's all he wants, a dwelling place. He doesn't desire of us anything more, Yisraya, but to walk in his Torah and his Mishvah. And that his name might rest therein. And Yahweh showed him the likeness of the sanctuary and the likeness of the vessels. We're all but vessels, all but children of Israel. Hallelujah. And in the end of the 40 days, Moshe came down from the mount, and the two tablets were in his hand. And Moshe came to the children of Israel and spoke to them all the words of Almighty Yahweh. And he taught them the Mishvah, the Torah, the laws, the statutes, and the judgments which Yahweh had taught him. And Moshe told the children of Israel the word of Yahweh, and that a sanctuary should be made for him to dwell among the children of Israel. And the people, they rejoice at all the tub which Yahweh has spoken unto them. Do we rejoice of all the tub that Yahweh has spoken unto us, Israel, that he will make us his tabernacle, Abaye, where he placed his ruach and placed his name, Yisraya. The Moshe, through Moshe, and he said, and they said that we would do all that Yahweh has commanded us this day. Hallelujah. Do we do all that Yahweh has commanded us, Yisraya? Are we still yet, do we have little idols and little things we still resort to? Do we look towards Abba Yahweh for all things? Call all things Israel. Yeah. For all things and all blessings do come from Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. It comes from Almighty Yahweh. I do told out him for all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. Concerning again this account of Israel. Why do we have the Torah, Israel? Why are these things, these examples written? It is for our learning. It's for our understanding that we not walk in the same paths continuously. Yet still we do, even unto this day, Yisrael. What does the Torah of Yahweh mean to us? Do we take it literally? Or do we just come into his body and just sit for a few minutes or an hour just to pass the time? Or do we apply it, Yisrael? Do we apply the misvah of Almighty Yahweh to our nephews, to our lives? Do we walk in the path of Siddiq, of righteousness, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shema of Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. Concerning, again, this calf. And we all have those things, Yisrael, that dwell in our bosom that do not please Yah. You might as well just be honest with yourselves. You might as well allow the Torah of Yahweh to search deeply. For those unclean things. 
Because at the day of judgment, the young of Almighty Yahweh, it's going to be too late then. So we should search for the leaven now. We should search for the idols. The idolatry should cease. The gods. We should stop worshiping them, Yisrael. And turn unto Almighty Yahweh. Turn at his reproof. And when the people saw that Moshe, again, he delayed from coming down from the mount. The people gathered themselves to Aaron and said unto him, to make us a God. Now, we, we think we don't say that in this hour, Israel, y'all, but we do. We do. We tend to turn to everything but Almighty Yahweh, even knowing what the Torah says. Why do we turn, Israel, y'all, from the misfire of Almighty Yahweh? It's because yet sin still lies in our bosom. There's still yet unclean things that are hidden, like they say, skeletons in our closet, Yisrael, Yah. And it's time that we cleanse it by the dom of Yahshua, Hamashiach. And I will read this account because there's something I do want to bring to our attention, Yisrael, Yah. It says in Exodus chapter 32, verse 2. And Aaron said to them, break off the golden earrings, your jewelry, what is by, bound about your neck. Under the Torah, Yahweh should be bound about our net, Yisrael, Yah. And break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives. Now, this is one thing that I, I want to do even a more in-depth study on. But even um, the earrings and the things in Mizraim, it was a type of identification of the house of Yisrael amongst Mizraim, that they could be identified. That they, 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 they couldn't mix with the Egyptians without being known by the bracelet and the earrings, Yisrael. How do I know that? Well, did not only the women wear the bracelets when they were somewhat engaged and brought, well, this is talking about also the sons. Their ears were pierced. They also had bracelets. So we must make a document or make sure that we are wearing what Yahweh intends for the house to wear, right. that we may be identified by the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Because you going into a jewelry store and putting on a necklace is, is not Kodesh. They're not made by Kodesh hands. They have not been sent by Almighty Yahweh. We try to make excuses to do what we want. Earrings in our ears, bracelets about our necks, about our wrists. Hallelujah. But there is a specific mark that Yah wants upon his people. And that is his name being written, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. He will place and add those things to beautify the house of Yisrael Yah. But in this instance, it was a mark of, of condemnation and of slavery unto the house at this time. Hallelujah. So what they did, they break off each one and gave it unto Aharon, this bondage. This iniquity that they was bound by. The worship of other gods. And seeing the sacrifices unto other gods while they was in Mizraim. That's why they wanted to follow this path. Because that's the kind of things that they were used to and used to seeing. The images. The images of beasts. And of man-like things. They wanted something that was massive and beautiful that was set before them. So they each took part of the making of this calf. And it displeased Almighty Yahweh. And each of them suffered for it, Yisrael. Yeah. Each of us individually yes. have these marks or these things about us, Yisrael. Yeah, and it should not be. Yes. And in the sin of the people at this time, and in their iniquity, they gave it all to Aharon. And what he should have done is rebuke the people. No matter if his life was threatened, yes. Yisrael. Yeah, that he was staying on the bite of Almighty Yahweh. But what did he do? He gave in into the sin of the people. And what came out? This mass thing. And then he was not honest in one incident. It talks about how they took the graving tools and they took the time to actually make this calf, to make this thing. We take our tools and we try to grave things and cut things to our advantage, Yisrael, when it's whatever we do is to our disadvantage, if it's not of Almighty Yahweh. And he said when he threw the gold into the furnace, into the fire, out come this calf. Does the gods... All these idols, do they have breath? No, they don't. They cannot even speak, nor can they hear. But yet he says, out walks this calf before the people. 
which was, which was not the truth, Israel. Yah. He formed and made this calf after the desires of the people. We should not form and make anything after our desires. It should be after the desire of Yahshua HaMashiach. And what was his desire, Israel? Yah? To do all things to please his Abba. All things to please his Abba. Let me move on in verse 3. And all the people, they break off or they took off the golden earrings which was in their ears. Now let me, let me go back. I want to make sure I put this point in here. Verse 2. And Haran said, break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, the bracelets, whatever part of the jewelry that they were, were wearing. And, and really, they should have just left all that in Mizraim, really. Because yeah. Yahweh had riches beyond the gold and the jewelry that they had Yisrael Yah, waiting for them. Which were in their ears and brought them to Aharon. And he received them at their hand, and he fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made a molten calf. So he took those things and he fashioned it and he made it. We want to take the Torah of Yahweh and we want to try to fashion it and make it unto something that is presentable unto us, that is in favor of us, Yisrael Yah. And they said, these be your gods. These are the mighty ones. This is what has delivered you from the hands of Mizraim, this beast, this four-footed beast. Yes, yes. Oh, Yisrael Yah, which I brought you out of the land of Mizraim. And when Aharon saw it, he built an altar before it, where he should have been building an altar before Almighty Yahweh. And Ahara made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast, it says here unto Yahweh, but it was a feast unto that beast. See, first off, he disobeyed Almighty Yahweh because he had commanded them not to make an image of anything in the heavens above or in the earth beneath. And yet, even knowing this, and it was spoken unto them as a commandment, yet they still erred before Almighty Yahweh. Are we still yet erring, Yisrael Yah? Yeah. After we have come unto the knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach? Yeah. That we do not stand upon the Torah, upon the righteousness of Almighty Yahweh. We allow others to influence us to do things like Aharon was influenced to do, instead of standing on the precious promises of Almighty Yahweh. Let us go on, Yisrael Yah. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought solemn offerings. And the people, they sat down, eat and drink. And what did they do? They rose up to play. They rose up in their mischief. They rose up in their blank desires and their lust, Yisrael, to play. And Yahweh said to Moshe, get you down for your people which you have brought from the land of Mizraim. They have corrupted themselves. Where did the corruption come from? Where did the corruption come from? It's those things that were still yet embedded in the land of Israel. It's those small things. See, an earring only weighs around a half a shackle, which is a very small amount. But it's the little things, it's the little foxes, Israel. It's the things that we don't think are much that destroys the vine, that destroys the life of Yahshua HaMashiach, this root that Yahweh has placed in Israel. Verse 8. And they turned aside quickly out of the way, out of the Torah, out of the Mishvah, which I have commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be your gods, O Yisrael. There are many gods, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gods, Yisrael. What is your God tonight? Are you worshipping gods? Hallelujah. Such so your heart, Israel, y'all, which have brought you forth out of the land of Mizraim. And Yahweh said to Moshe, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stick necked people. Now therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Yeah. And Moshe besought Yahweh, his Almighty, and said, Yahweh, why does your wrath wax hot against your people? which you have brought forth in the land of Mizraim with great power and with a mighty hand. Has he not done that, Israel? Has he not brought us from sin, from bondage, the house of bondage? With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, Israel? Hallelujah. 
Verse 12, wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them on the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. And he said unto almighty Yahweh and repent of this evil against your people. And remember, he wants him to remember the covenant that he made Israel. Moshe reminded Yahweh because Yahweh was in great displeasure. And it, it was even justified, Yisrael, the anger of Almighty Yahweh upon this nation. But he said, he pleaded with him to remember Abram, Yitzhah, and Yisrael, your servants whom you have swore by your own self. Yes. Yahweh cannot swear upon hiding anything but his own self, Yisrael. And said to them, I will multiply your zero, your seed, as the stars of the Shemayims, and all this land I have, and all of this land that I have spoken of, I will give to your zira, your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Don't you know there's a great wealth of possessions for us to inherit, Israel? Hallelujah. More than just these physical things, but things that even the eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it even entered into the heart of man. The things, the beauty that Yahweh has for his people. Verse 14, and Yahweh repented of the evil which he had brought, thought to do to his people, Yisrael. This last account of the calf, Exodus 32, 15, as we go on. And Moshe turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of, of, and the, two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on their sides, and on one side and on the other, were they written? And the tables were the work of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know what Yahweh has written in our left, Israel Yah, is a handiwork of Almighty Yahweh? He written it with his finger, Israel Yah, in our heart. He has engraved his Torah in our minds, Israel Yah. And written, and the writing was the writing of Yahweh graven among the tables. Verse 17. And, while, and when Yahushua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said to Moshe, there is a noise of war in the camp. Mm, yes. Who was Yahushua? Well, he was the son of Nun. He was also um, the head of the Levitical um, priesthood of Israel unto, Israel, unto Yahweh, a service of Almighty Yahweh. And he says, in verse 18, and he said, It is not the voice of them that shouted for mastery or might or that they have overcome someone or something. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But it is the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass that as soon as he came into the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moshe, he was, his anger was waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which he had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it into powder once again, Yisrael. And he strode it upon the water and made the children of Yisrael to drink. And I, as I pondered this, I wonder what that must have tasted like. But really, the element of gold, there's really no taste to it. There's no taste to it. But yet, pure gold is edible. But you only can take so much of it. And too much will poison you, Israel. It will cause vomiting, headaches, ulcers, internal bleeding. That's what an overdose or too much gold will cause, Israel. But yet, he made the house of Israel to drink of this thing. This wicked thing that they have created and that they have made. And Moshe said to Aharon, what did this people do to you? That you have brought so great a sin upon them, upon the camp. And Aharon said, let not the anger of my master wax hot. You know the people. You know the people. So in order for Moshe to know or to have an experience, he had to understand what the people were about, what the people would do. Hallelujah. Do you know what we would do, Yisrael? 
If it wasn't for the guiding of Almighty Yahweh, his Ruah in the midst, there's nothing we would not do. It's only his mishfah that has been written with his finger in our love that keeps us, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. So day by day we must search ourselves circumspectly for the leaven, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know the people, Moshe, that they are set in ra, evil. They are set in mischief. Displeasing unto Almighty Yahweh. Are we set that way, Israel? Don't you know when you pour a concrete slab or you're laying block using mortar, once it is laid and it's dried up, it is set. You have to break it in pieces to repair it or to structure that thing right again. Well, that is the heart of the people of Israel. Those that are chosen, the zira, the sea. We have been set in our old ways. Our minds have been set to displease Yahweh. That's why our minds should be after the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must be changed, Israel. Hallelujah. We cannot walk no longer after the flesh. For they said to me, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land, that's what Aharon is explaining to Moshe, out of the land of Egypt, we know, what, we, we know not what has become of him. And he said to them, whosoever has any gold, let him break it off. So they gave it to me, and I cast it into fire, and it says here, and there came out this calf. He didn't say, no, we molded. We shaped it. This is what we wanted. And when Moshe saw that the people, that they were naked. Naked. A shameful thing. Naked amongst each other and amongst themselves. For Ahara had made them naked in their shame amongst their enemies. And Moshe stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on Yahweh's side? Who is on Yahweh's side tonight? Are you on Yahweh's side? Have you been placed at the service of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? Let him come unto me, and all the sons of Levi gathered. Look who gathered out of the whole house. The sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him, and he said to them, Thus saith Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Israel, put every man his sword by his side. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Do we have our swords to our side, Israel? Do we have the Torah of Yahweh, which is sharp as a two edged sword? Do we have it near unto our bosom, Israel? And he says, Do what? And go in and out from the gate to gate through the camp and slay every man his brother. Can you imagine that? In and out of the camp, slaying the judgment of Yahweh. But yet, who stepped forth out of the midst? Were the sons of Levi part of what was going on? Were they Israel? But yet, when he asked who was on Yahweh's side, you would think, you would think everyone should have stepped forth. And every man his companion and every man his neighbor. And the children... Of Levi did according to the word of Moshe, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. The judgment of Yahweh. We should allow the judgment, the Torah of Yahweh, to kill everything, Israel, that corrupts the house of Israel. For Moshe has said, Consecrate yourselves, set yourselves apart this day unto Yahweh, even every man upon his son, and every and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't you want the blessings of Yahweh to be yes. bestowed upon you, Israel? Yes. I want that blessing bestowed. Yes. Even though I have walked in the iniquity of my mind, yet I want to stand in obedience unto the Torah of Yahweh for his service, to do what he commands of me, to repent for my actions and my deeds before Almighty Yahweh. I want to make a, 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 a recommence of my deeds, Israel. And it came to pass that on the morrow that Moshe said unto the people, you have sinned a great sin unto Yahweh. Have we not sinned a great sin unto Almighty Yahweh? Did not Yahshua HaMashiach stand in the gap? Hallelujah. And now I would go up to Yahweh, prevent you, I shall make an atonement for 
your sins. Yahshua HaMashiach is our atonement tonight, Israel, that has been made for our sins. Even though we have walked, walked um, not according to all the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, yet Yahshua HaMashiach, he stands there at the right hand, reminding Yahweh of the dawn that was shed. Hallelujah. That we may be saved, Israel. And Moshe returned unto Yahweh, and he said, This people have sinned a great sin and have made gods of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, forgive us, Almighty Yahweh, of our sins, of our iniquity, of our trespasses. Not last week, not yesterday, but today, Yahweh. We have fallen short of the beauty and are lifting the name of Almighty Yahweh today. So forgive us, Abba Yahweh, of our sin, of our iniquity. We plead the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. And Moshe said, if not, blot me, I pray you, out of your book, what you have written. How many of us would say that, Yisrael? Would stand in the gap and say, blot me out of your book, Almighty Yahweh, if you're going to destroy this people. And Yahweh said to Moshe, whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now, lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my Malak shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day I will visit their sin upon them. And Yahweh plagued the people because they had made a calf which Aharon had made. Hallelujah. So if it wasn't for the Dharma of Yahshua HaMashiach, yet while we're in this body of flesh, yet we are still plagued. But the Dharma Yahshua has been shared. It has been applied, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So the curse has been broken under the Dharma of Yahshua, Hamashiach, that we all not be destroyed. And we know that Yahweh, his judgment shall rest upon the house of Yisrael, but yet he shall bring out the very elect, the small remnant amongst the people. Hallelujah. Way. Turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It's amazing how we turn the splendor or the beauty of Yahweh around Yisrael. Did not they do that out of Mizraim as the accounts of the calf that I have written? Taking up those things that displeased Yahweh, the things that bound them in Mizraim. Yet because they wanted a visual, something set before the eyes that they can see. A calf, a four-legged beast, could not do anything for them. You know, that is an icon amongst many um, religions in the world, animals, goats. It's an icon. It's a source of meat, of milk. There are those that yet still worship the beasts. But Yahweh created the beast. And they have their part, Yisrael, but not to be above Almighty Yahweh, no matter who it may be. Hallelujah. For it says in Romeo chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the message of Yahshua HaMashiach. For it is the power of Yahweh to salvation to everyone that believes. To Yisrael first. And also to, it says the Greek or the Gentile. The Goyim. And it says in verse 17, For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from the Amunah, from faith to faith, even as it is written, that the just shall live by Amunah. We must live by Amunah, Yisrael. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from the Shemaiah against all the wickedness and unrighteousness of men. Did we not see the wrath of Yahweh upon the house of Yisrael amongst the camp? Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They held the Torah of Yahweh. He commanded them not to, but yet they uphold it in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest to them. For Yahweh has known it, has shown it to them. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. We know who created all things, Israel. Right, we don't question that. Even his eternal power and the essence of Yahweh, so 
that they are without excuse. We are without excuse tonight, Israel. We are without excuse to turn out of the way of Almighty Yahweh, to turn the splendor of Yahweh into unrighteousness. Because that, when they knew Yahweh, they magnified and honored him not as Almighty Yahweh. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their own imaginations, and their foolish heart were darkened. We walk in the foolishness of the love of Israel. It just shows the darkness that lies within the heart of his people. Professing themselves to be wise, have we not professed ourselves to be wise? To walk after the Torah of Yahweh? Or we have experience with Yada Yah? Professing themselves to be wise, they became as fools and changed the splendor of the uncorruptible Yahweh into an image made like to corruptible man. And to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, y'all saw also given them to uncleanliness. Were they, were they not unclean, Israel? Y'all? Naked, in mischief, playing amongst themselves? He gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie, and worship and serve the creature. Don't we serve the creature? The creature comforts. We got to have our microwaves and our toaster ovens and our vehicles. We got to have all these things to comfort our flesh. Do we not, Yisrael? They serve the creature more than the creator. We serve the beast. Who is blessed forever? Is it not so? And let it be fulfilled. For this cause Yahweh has given them up to vile affections. To even their women did not, I'm sorry, for even their women did change the natural use into that which was against nature. So even when we look at nature, there's a natural or there's an order. Damn Mother Nature. Almighty Yahweh set everything in its course and in its place and the way it should be. And for men, to revile that, it is an abomination unto Almighty Yahweh, whether it's male or female. They burn in their lust, men with men, working that which was unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of that error that was meant, or the judgment of what they put out, Yisrael. And, when, and even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things. He gave them over to do those things. Why? Because they did not uphold the power of Almighty Yahweh, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. To do those things which are not convenient nor proper. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, full of murder, debate, deceit, Malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of Yahweh, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Do we invent evil things, Israel? Yes, yes. Don't you know that's what that's what the children of Israel did in Israel? They just invented an evil thing before Almighty Yahweh. Inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. Even when you look at the animals, they have a type of an affection for one another. When you see a calf with its mother, the heifer, as long as that calf is near that heifer, it will provide that calf with everything that is needed. Natural affection. Implaceable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only to do the same, but to have pleasure in them. How can we have pleasure in the evil things against Almighty Yahweh, knowing that it displeased him, and then knowing that there's a judgment? That's mocking Yahweh. 
We think we're not going to pay for the things that we sow and what we do. If you reap to, if you reap, or you sow to the whirlwind, you reap to the wind, you sir, you're gonna um, you're gonna reap the whirlwind, Israel. Hallelujah. And as I bring this to an end, Israel, let's turn to Revelations chapter three, verse fourteen. You know, my mind goes back sometimes as growing up seeing the television, shows, and movies. You wonder where these imaginations or these things come from. We think they're just a figment of men's imagination. But don't you know that the wickedness of man has been opened up? whereby these unclean spirits reveal themselves unto man? Do we not think that Yahweh, there's things in his kingdom, Yisrael, as it speaks of in Revelation. Well, that's just, that's just um, Revelation. I mean, it's not actual. They're not actual beings of that nature. It's talking about Revelation. It's just for us to learn from. No, it's more than, than just that. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they say it's... Uh, uh, parables or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, I can't think of the word. Well, when it talks about in Revelation, even the beast of Revelation, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, um, it, it's an example for us. Yes, it's a type in shadows, but these, you know, he was, he, he actually seen these things, Yisrael. And there, there are things that Yahweh has created in the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh that shall reign, and they have power under his throne. Yeah, metaphors, there, there it is, that's what I'm looking for. They want to say these are metaphors, not actual things, it's just for to learn from an example, but that's more than just metaphors, Yisrael. There are things that we have not seen with these physical eyes. Isn't it something how wicked men can tap and see these visions of these beasts and of these things, but yet the house of Israel, y'all can't see the beauty in what Yahweh has created? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did not the lion lie with the lamb? But we do not see that today, do we? You said a lion by a lamb, that's, that's, that's lunch meat. But yet there's an order and a magnificent order of Almighty Yahweh, and there are what the scripture called beasts that have their power and they have their place, Yisrael, in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and in the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh in his kingdom. So I want to, as I bring this to an end, Yisrael, that's why Yahweh commanded us not to worship things that we see, whether it be in the sky or on the old land. Not to set those things before them. Because they have their place and they have their power. But Yahweh, he is above all. He has created of all things. Even the enemy. Hallelujah. And the Malak of the congregation of Laodicean is right. These things said to be a truth. The faithful and true witness and being of the congregation of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. Yahweh knows our works, Israel. Yeah. He said, I would that you were hot or, hot or cold. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither hot or cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, I know not and know not that you are wretched. We are wretched, Israel, miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich and white raiment that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Yahweh desires us to see, Israel. He desires us to understand. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasteneth. So then, be zealous, therefore, and repent, O Israel. Just repent. We, we, We've forgotten how to repent before Almighty Yahweh. Repent not to go back and do those deeds again. And we know that images and certain things displease Yahweh. We place them before him. 
And in having the knowledge and the understanding of that, Israel, we should not turn back. And he says in verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him. Open the door of your love, Israel, unto Almighty Yah. And we'll sup with him. Fellowship, sup with him. And he with me. To whom that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also have overcome and have sat down with my Abba on his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says unto the congregation. Do we have the ear to hear Yisrael? Well, Yahweh speaks unto the house. Chapter 4, verse 1. After these things, I look. And behold, a door was opened in the Shemayim, in the heavens. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a shofar talking with me. And it said, come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Ruach, and behold, a throne was set in the Shemayim, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat on the throne looked upon like jasper and a sardine stone, precious stones. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like to an emerald. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty, twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had their heads, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps, seven lamps, of fire burning before the throne, which we know are the seven ruach of Almighty Yahweh. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like to crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So not only were there these beasts, but they had knowledge. The eyes represent the knowledge of Almighty Yahweh, the understanding of Almighty Yahweh, the foresight. And the first beast was like unto a lion. The second beast was like unto a calf. And the third beast was like it had the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about them. And they were full of the eyes within, and the rest, and they rest not day or night, saying, Kodesh, 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 O Yahweh Almighty, which was, which is, and is to come. And when those beasts gave splendor and honor, and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who lives forever and ever. For the four and twenty elders shall fall down before him, that sit on the throne and worship him that lives forever and ever. Don't you know there's a place, Yisrael, Yah, for each and every one of us? Yeah. Did not Yahshua say that there's a place that is not given, or the power has not been given unto me, but it is of my Abba to give? And they cast their thrones before Almighty Yahweh, saying, You are worthy, O Yahweh, to receive splendor and honor. Yahweh, he's worthy. To receive splendor and honor, Yisrael. Hallelujah. There's nothing that should rise up before Almighty Yahweh. There's nothing that should stop us, Yisrael, for walking in the Torah of Yahweh. He has given us all that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach. To receive splendor and honor and power. For you have created all things. All things. And for your pleasure, they are and were created. Hallelujah. We have been created, Yisrael, after the likeness of Almighty Yahweh. Why? What for? For his pleasure. That we may bring honor to his name. So let us burn the gods, Yisrael. Let us cast off those things that lead us off of the, the direct, the path of Almighty Yahweh. And worship Yahweh, for he is truly worthy of all things. Hallelujah. I do pray this simple message was an inspiration to you, Levim, Yisrael, Yah. Don't let anything exalt itself above Almighty Yahweh, because he is able, and more than able, to make you what he wants you to be. Hallelujah.